What is up guys, Jav here, back today jumping into Destiny 2. Now in our video today, we're taking a look at the brand new Serif Tower public event. This has changed over the course of the last week. So in this video today, we're going to break that down and show you how you can complete this as easily as possible. So if you're chasing down those final triumphs for your almighty seal, then this will be the video for you. Now, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a rating down below. That super helps me out here on the channel. And if you are new around here and want to keep up to date with all the latest Destiny 2 content, then be sure to hit subscribe as well. But without further delay, guys, let's jump into the video. Now, alongside the launch of Season 10, Season of the Worthy, you saw the introduction of the Serif Tower public event. We covered this off earlier in the season to cover off exactly how you could complete the original event. However, with the introduction of Guardian Games and the successful progression of gradually unlocking all the bunkers across the Moon, European Dead Zone and Io, this has seen this public event evolve into a new activity which requires you to complete successfully as a group in order to unlock the hard-coded victory triumph. This is an important triumph that you'll need for your seal. So if you're going after that almighty seasonal seal, so be sure to stick around and get as many hints and tips as possible. Now, the easiest destination by far is the moon. Most of this is linked to how close plates are in proximity to each other and where the enemies actually spawn. So it helps with defending each plate and being able to keep an eye on each and every plate from multiple angles. So it's very effective and I highly recommend that you jump over to the moon when you're trying to get this triumph done. Now in each and every instance it's possible to have up to nine guardians in total you can carry three guardians in each fire team so you can't match make this activity however you can increase your chances of success by loading in as a fire team of three now if you don't have a pre-made fire team there are some great lfg tools currently available even over on the official bungie website i'll leave a link to the lfg forum down below so be sure to check that out if you're struggling to get a pre-made fire team together now, another great way to build up your fire team is by looking at your roster before starting the event. From here, you can see if anyone's actually got an open fire team or are already part of a pre-made fire team. For anyone that is running solo, feel free to message those in the most kindest way possible to see if they'd either join up with you in your fire team to allow more people to join the current instance or whether they would allow you to borrow their fire team so you can actually invite additional friends if you have some standing on the byline. These sort of matchmaking methods take us back to the days of Escalation Protocol where getting nine players in the same instance almost took longer than completing the event itself in many cases. And it's the same with this particular Triumph, but all these steps will help you in your road to success for getting the Triumph done. So we know what the event is, we know the best place to do the event, and we know a couple of cool hints and tips to build up our fire teams to help improve our chances of success. But how does this event work and what can we do to further improve our chances? Now, the first two waves of this event are very reminiscent of the original event. There will only be one plate active at any one time. You need to defend that plate of all the ads in the area to prevent any being on the plate when the Serif Tower is fully charged. This is when it will decide how many charges to release. And every single time we need to be seeing six charges being released to signify a successful charge. Once we have all six charges, we still need to throw them all at the main charge, which is connected to the main Serif Tower. This will gradually push that charge towards the main column, for which we'll need a maximum of six in order to complete successfully. You can use a tractor cannon as a way of speeding this up. However, we didn't use one in the run that you're seeing now. Now in the first two or three waves, you will get very manageable yellow bar enemies appear. There'll be one that will appear almost from each side of the area. So be sure to prioritize these when they appear to make sure they don't cause too many problems if they reach any of the plates. These will progressively get harder as the event goes on. So be sure to prioritize those the best you can. Now, a great thing about the first few waves is you can actually defend each plate more than once. And this is by not completing all six charges in the first possible opportunity. You can actually roll over additional charges onto the next phase and you can roll these over phase on phase throughout the course of the event. And what they will actually do is as you get in the more difficult phases, you will have surplus charges available, which means you can go through the final phases of the Serif Tower event a lot quicker. And you'll see that as we get towards the latter stages. So we've successfully made it through the first couple of phases here and the yellow bar bosses have now gone from just yellow bars onto ultras. So these are a little bigger in size, but also a lot tankier as well. So as before, 
Again, we need to prioritize these the best we can. A couple of supers that were being used that were really effective was the Chaos Reach. This melted the bosses, especially with Geomag stabilizers and being able to prolong that super at a single target. Also, a couple of roaming supers as well. The bottom tree storm caller is very effective for clearing low tier adds, especially if you get a plate that becomes overwhelmed. And the same goes for any of the Arc Strider subclasses. They're good for add clearance as well if a plate gets overwhelmed alongside bottom tree striker titan 2. Now in terms of weapons, I was running the Spare Rations Hand Cannon alongside the 7th Seraph Shotgun. The shotgun has Quick Draw and Vorpal, which makes it really effective for the bosses as they appear. And I also have the Air Apparent. This was really good, again, for clearing adds, which is why I tried to stay in the middle of this area the best I possibly could. Now, as you'll see from some of the waves that are playing out, having those surplus charges it makes it really effective for us to be able to complete each of the Seraph Towers very quickly and allows us to prioritize the enemies rather than the charges. This being said though, it is really important to be aware of where your fire team members are at all times just to make sure that when two plates become active, which they do at roughly halfway through the event, that you know exactly which plates are active and which fire teams are responsible for those plates. Now as you approach the latter stages of the event, the yellow bar mages will now turn into full on bosses. These are absolutely huge by the size of these ogres that appear. They will spawn in at more than one location, which can make it very tricky if you don't have a fire team in that area. Now it should only take one fire team to prioritize the bosses to be able to take them out effectively with the rest of the fire teams defending the plates and prioritizing charges once they become available and if you successfully rolled over charges from previous rounds then you'll have surplus charges available which makes these final rounds very fast indeed which is very important as you want to make sure that the plates don't become overwhelmed by bosses and adds which could mean that you fail the event now a few weapons of note which were really effective in our runs had a couple of grenade launchers which were really effective so be sure to bring out those spike grenade grenade launchers to help take out the bosses really fast and effectively. Also, Black Talon does some serious damage if you have the catalyst unlocked as well. This would be really beneficial going into those latter stages. So there we have it guys, that is the brand new Serif Tower public event, which is something you're going to need to complete successfully if you want the almighty seal. So be sure to try out some of the hints and tips in this video and let me know in the comment section how you get on. If you have enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a rating down below. That super helps me out here on the channel. And if you are new around here, I want to keep up to date with all the latest Destiny 2 content, then be sure to hit subscribe as well. I'm going to jump back into the game as always guys, but I will catch you all again very soon.